are dead in two separate homicide investigations this New Year's Day, both happening in the early morning hours after the start of 2021. Shootings in Wichita have nearly doubled in 2021 so far. Police say a fight inside a home near 23rd and Hillside ended with a man being shot to death. Investigators are still searching for the killer. Today we just lost a cousin and got another one in the hospital. They nephews. We gotta do better, Wichita. And his family tells me he was sitting in his car right here, and that's when a car pulled up and shot him and his cousin. So I grew up in what I call the stealing, killing, and drug dealing 90s. And we all know that if you lived in Wichita in the 90s, it was hell. And I hate to say it like that, but that is the truth. We dealt with so many deaths of gang members. We dealt with so many drive-by shootings. And I really feel like if we don't get a handle on what is going on now, we are going to repeat the 90s. And so what I've seen is uh, several of our young people uh, getting involved in situations that they shouldn't be, especially with firearms. And so we're losing several uh, men and women uh, to, to gun crime. Well, we need this program because we need to put a stop to all the violence and uh, senseless shootings that are happening in our community. I'm tired of watching young people throw their life away. My 17-year-old my son buried four friends last year. Four friends. You know, that's, that's rough. What do I say to that? What do, what do we as men have to say to that, you know? This is the stuff that we allow to go on in our in our communities. It is time. It, it has to be time. It, it is past time. We have to do something. And um, if we don't, we'll continue to do what we've been doing. And that's having funerals. And as my role as a pastor, I've seen it all. I've I've seen so many young men and women be buried before their time. I've seen so many innocent lives taken. I've seen um, in times where uh, families are sitting in a courtroom and gentlemen is brung in shackles or a young lady brung in shackles and nine out of the times the only person that's there is the mother. I've seen mothers crying over, over deceased sons, uh, 17, 16, 15 year old boys. I, like many other officers on this department, I'm tired of going to homicide scenes and seeing young children dead in our streets. I'm tired of going to hospitals and seeing shooting victims that are 15, 16, 12 years old. It's, it's heartbreaking and it's, uh, you know, it, uh, it takes a toll on, uh, on individuals in our department, but also in the community as a whole. I, I've been there, I've done that, you know? And, and when I tell you it's not worth it, it's not worth it, throwing, throwing your life away for, for, for temporary accolades that that really in the in the summation of life really mean nothing. You know, uh, I can't go to no job interview and tell them, hey, yeah, I was a top gang member for the last 30 years. The Strategic Engagement to Reduce Violence Program, uh, or known as SERVE, the program is pretty simple. We identify the most violent gun offenders in our community that are under the age of 20 and let them know that they've been identified and that we know who they are and what they're doing uh, to uh, themselves and the community. We identify the individual needs of our youthful uh, candidates, pair them with the resources that uh, we've identified to get them on the right track so they can become productive members of society. Uh, if they have substance abuse problems or if they're in gangs, we can do everything we can to try to get them away from that gang lifestyle. First of all, I think it's about time that we do something uh, as far as guns on the streets, as far as bullets that are being shot. It's time for us to call out those gentlemen, those ladies, those individuals. It's time because I, I just, I, I've been waiting for, for a, a period of time where we as a community would get tired of seeing what we've been seeing and dealing with what we've been dealing with. 
We continually see the same people involved in shootings time and time again. And this is a proactive effort to reach out to young adults that are engaged in this kind of violent behavior and get them help before they end up shooting someone and ending up in prison for the rest of their life or end up being shot themselves. This program is more than just providing an opportunity. It's a wake-up call. I think we need this program so that we can uh, make our city, for one, a safer place, uh, but ultimately so that we can have successful young adults in our community. We're going to provide education, so whether that's through Cancel, McAdams, which is an alternative, WSU Tech. We want to uh, either get these kids employed or get them uh, some kind of trade so they can start uh, working. For so long in the African-American community, black folks have felt as if the police didn't care. They didn't care about our plight. They didn't care about our poor housing situation. They didn't care if we ate at night. And now for them to turn around and say, listen, I want to build a relationship by creating a program to save your son and to save your daughter. And so what I would say is, listen, what you have tried has not worked. Give this a shot. But basically what our goal is rehabilitation instead of incarceration. And so we want to identify those who are involved in our violent crime, bring them in and just tell them, we see you and we want to help you change. You know, in the last year, there's been a lot of talk about reimagining the police and disproportionality of arrests. And this program is a proactive effort to grab hold of those individuals that are involved in violence and get them the resources they need to be better, right? So when we talk about disproportionality in the, in the prisons and the jail system, this is an effort to keep them out of them. Really is a trajectory for success should they choose it. It's different in the way that we used to do things where we were reactive. We'd have a crime, we'd interview suspects, make arrests, people would go to jail. This is an effort to look at who is committing violent acts in our city and who is the most likely to either be shot or shoot someone and we identify them using the data of cases that are reported to us and tapping them and saying, hey, we're, we're here to help you. We care about you. We want you to be successful, but you can't go on with this lifestyle. We're going to give you the roadmap and help and resources to get out of it. Should a candidate choose not to accept the help and resources that we provide and continue to commit violent acts and shootings in our community, they will be held accountable. And so if they're busy with education and working, then they're, they're gonna uh, stay busy and out of uh, criminal activity. Man, here you have uh, the very entity that, that, that normally wants to lock you up and throw away the key, uh, trying to come and throw you a life raft, trying to put you in touch with uh, every resource imaginable at their disposal, uh, to get you outside of a life of crime, to, 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 to help you uh, 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 come past some of those mistakes that you've made, whether they be intentional or unintentional. I just really believe in my life that so many times people feel like they don't have a support system. Well, here it is. The Wichita Police Department are reaching out, those governing bodies are reaching out saying, what can we do to help you? I'm so thankful that there is now a vision for our city to put these guns down, to educate, to not incarcerate all the time, to help, to, to, to show a better way. I feel that there is gonna be a, a positive change for everyone, not just those involved directly in our program. In my opinion, it's one of the best programs for reducing violence and actually helping people versus hurting them that there is out there.